Ja, sehr gerne. Ja. As the commander of Apollo 11, Neil's step onto the moon's surface not only fulfilled the national goal set by President Kennedy, but established America as the space leader. Neil was one of the finest gentlemen I've ever known. I love talking to him about flying. I think more than an astronaut, Neil was a pilot, a superb engineering test pilot. Kennedy Space Center was proud to launch Neil, Buzz and Mike on their historic mission. But before they could make history, the Apollo 11 crew members spent time right here in the Operations and Checkout Building, or ONC. I want to begin my remarks by reminding all of us uh, why we're here on the Space Coast today. 45 years ago, NASA's journey to land the first humans on the moon began right here at the Kennedy Space Center. NASA astronauts, beginning with the Mercury 7 and continuing through Gemini and Apollo years, blasted off from these storied shores. For 30 years, the unprecedented success of our space shuttle program was made possible by you, the men and women of the Kennedy Space Center. So today, we have come home to commemorate what is arguably the most significant event in the history of human exploration, the Apollo 11 moon landing of July 20th, 1969. We're very fortunate to have with us two of the members of that historic mission, Buzz Aldrin and Mike Collins. As well, Swanee, I wasn't alive. But as a child growing up, I, every every summer we went on vacation to Ocean City, Maryland, and that's where my parents watched. Uh, Watch Neil make those first footprints on the moon, and they used to tell me this story every single summer. So I grew up with this in my mind all the time. So like you said, it was huge inspiration for me. It's funny, I've got a big question for you because I think, I, I, I know you taught me how to fly the shuttle because many people may not know this, but Steve Swanson was once a flight, what we call a flight simulation engineer, an FSC, sitting in the center seat, probably scared to death watching us try to land. Uh, but he taught me how to fly a shuttle. And so, in your wildest imagination, did you ever envision you would be where you are today? And what advice do you have for some, some kids that are sitting down here right now looking? Well, it was a dream. You know, you don't ever think it's really going to come true. Just work hard at it. And that's exactly what you do. Just persevere, work hard, enjoy life, and maybe your dream will come true. It did for me. I got lucky. 
regenerative uh, environmental control system that's processing urine into water. We're making our own oxygen. Uh, we pretty much, we're getting very close to a closed loop system. So this, to me, this and reliability of the spacecraft, that's kind of the backbone of this mission that we have coming up. Oh, my message is simple. I mean, these are heroes that I've had my entire life. Known, known these names the every day I've lived. And so I just want to say an enormous thank you. Thank you for putting our country on this path that we remain on today. And uh, without you gentlemen, I wouldn't be up here with uh, Swanee and my other crewmates today. And so my dreams came true thanks to them. You guys just keep doing a great job up, up there. This is KSC out. I forgot, we're supposed to introduce the next person. So it's my honor to introduce Rick Armstrong, who's uh, then going to give us some remarks from the uh, first set of remarks from the Armstrong. Test pilot training, because I hadn't been through a test pilot training before. I was selected. But then I commanded the, the test pilot school afterward, not exactly what I wanted, but I learned what test pilots were all about. And that man, Without a doubt, was one of the best, certainly the best test pilot, I feel, that was selected for the NASA program. I always, I hate to always point things that are wrong, but in your program it says, my name is Edwin, quote, Buzz Aldrin, Jr. In 1903, 1983, I legally changed it. <laughs> and I've been thinking of uh, adding a middle name, Lightyear. <laughs> the guy who brought us there and brought us back. I'm very pleased to introduce to you right now Mike Collins. I always remember them as the Gemini 12 crew. The capstone of that little gem of a program that you guys ran out on uh, pad 19. I first met Neil 52 years ago. We were the second group of nine astronauts that met secretly under the name of Max Peck at the Rice Hotel in Houston in 1962. Now, when the rest of us discovered that Neil was already a NASA employee, we knew there was going to be tough competition ahead. But Neil was a team player, and over the years, his engineering expertise contributed much to the success of our space program. Neil and I spent a week together in Pensacola learning to fly helicopters. I suspected that he had some previous experience and he only kind of laughed, but it took me some time to figure out how to control that machine. On our way home, we learned that President Kennedy was killed. And we wondered at that time what that would do to our program. Now known as the, guess what? Uh, Neil was one of the X-15 pilots, a small elite group which flew the rocket ship to Mach 5 or 6 and several hundred thousand feet. Uh, even in this tight group, I thought Neil stood out. He had the reputation of being the one with the deepest and best understanding of that machine, its design, and how it should be tested. As a kid, uh, Neil built model airplanes, uh, you know, like a lot of us did, but he took it a step further and built a wind tunnel. A wind tunnel to measure and improve his designs. He later applied that powerful combination of curiosity and intelligence to his work as an experimental test pilot, 
flying uh, new jet fighters, Gemini, the LLTV, you remember the lunar landing uh, test vehicle, and Apollo. I think we all remember Neil's one small step. <laughs>